Welcome back. In this video, we are going to work with rational expressions in which we have radicals in the denominator. And since a rational number is a quotient of two integers, simplified radicals are generally irrational. So a radical in the denominator then creates an irrational denominator. So proper form of fractions have no radicals in the denominator. They're rational denominators. So we don't want any square roots or cube roots or anything of that sort in our denominators. So our process to rationalize will be to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same value, so some version of 1. The key is what's going to be that value. Well, that value will be the value that makes the denominator an integer. So we're going to be try and create perfect squares or perfect cubes in our denominator. Well, fortunately with square roots, perfect squares are really simple. Anything multiplied by itself is a perfect square. So with square roots, this is pretty straightforward. So in number one, we want to rationalize the denominator. We want to simplify this. This isn't totally simplified because we have a square root in the denominator. And our goal here is to get the denominator to be an integer. Well, if we multiply the square root of 3 by itself, that's square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which we know is 3. So we have to multiply the bottom by the square root of 3, but we don't want to change our location on the number line, so we have to multiply the top by the square root of 3, so some version of 1. So this is one of the versions of 1. So radical 3 times the square root of 3 is 3, right? Square root of Tom times the square root of Tom is Tom. So we get 5 radical 3 all over 3. And we've simplified that and we've rationalized it. Our denominator is now an integer. Sample problem 2. A little bit more comp complicated. I've got a variable in here and um, uh, a somewhat larger number. Uh, we could look at this. This is the square root of 2 over the square root of 9 times the square root of 5 times the square root of x. And, well, I've got the square root of 9 in the denominator. I'm going to simplify that to 3. So, Let's see what we've got here. I've got radical 2 over 3 radical 5x. So I need to get this radical 5x out of the denominator. It's okay to have the 3 here. So how am I going to do that? I have to multiply by some version of 1. So that means I have to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same value. But if I square radical 5x, that'll create... 5x. So I multiply top and bottom by radical, five, radical 5x. So my numerator, radical 2 times 5x, and x is under the square root, is square root of 10x all over, well radical 5x times radical 5x of course is 5x, so that's 3 times 5x, or 15x. So the square root of 10x over 15x, and that is our simplified, rationalized answer. Sample problem 3. Again, another square root, all under the radical. So I'm going to use use my product rule here and I'm going to make this the square root of 100 times the square root of 2 times the square root of k to the sixth all over the square root of y to the sixth times the square root of y. So the square root of 100 is 10. The square root of k to the sixth is k to the third, radical 2, all over y cubed, 
square root of y. So I've simplified this, but I still have a square root in the denominator, but my only square root is the square root of y now, so I multiply by square root of y over square root of y. So I've been simplifying these first to get a smaller square root to rationalize. And we end up with 10k cubed square root of 2y. I can put those together using the product rule. And I have y cubed times y, which is y to the fourth power, right? y cubed times y. So that's going to simplify all over to y to the fourth. Samples four and five, a little bit different now. I've been working with square roots, but now I have cube roots. This is a little bit more complicated. I can't just multiply this by the cube root of nine. Um, so I multiply it by the cube root of nine, I'd get the cube root of 81, which is not a perfect cube. So what I need here is I need a perfect cube as a radicand. So what's going to give me a perfect cube radicand? Well, 27 is a perfect cube radicand. So in this case, since I want 27, that becomes my goal. I multiply it by top and bottom by the cube root of 3 over the cube root of 3. So now I get 7 cube root of 3 all over cube root of 27, which is 3. So I get 7 cube root of 3 all over 3. So on number 5, the question is, how do I make this this radicand, a, this needs to be a perfect cube. Well, what do I have to multiply 5 by to make it a perfect cube? But two more factors of 5, 5 times 5 times 5. So I will leave this for you to finish up and bring to class. So finish sample 5, see if you can rationalize that with a perfect cube. And we will see you in class.